Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and uh, this video today on uh, Prisma Access Browser. I'm going to be doing a series of videos on Prisma Access Browser. Uh, for those that, that don't know, Prisma Access Browser is something that Palo Alto have bought. They, uh, they bought Talon, the secure browser, and they've now integrated it into their Prisma Access offering. Um, from a, a cost perspective, it provides a much easier route into a controllable web experience and a secure web experience for small to medium enterprises. As far as I'm aware, there's no minimum uh, seat license, so it's not like you don't have to have 200 users or something like that, which you do for Prisma Access, which of course they have to do in order to, to cover that. I mean, Prisma Access sits in multiple public clouds and it, it costs it costs money to have it up there, so that there has to be a, a break-even point, whereas Prisma Access Browser, of course, is is um, is a lot cheaper to, to administer. They you have to have CDL, so you have to put CDL in the background um, and CIE. And when you first uh, when you first fire this up, um, the, we'll go over the licensing at some point in next video. and do a whole series on them. Um, when you first fire them up and you first uh, uh, enable them, the CIE has to um, has to back off to an IDP, a SAML IDP. Um, but again, there's there's lots of ways around this. I, I personally am using I use uh, Okta, which I use a developer account on Okta, which means I'd learn a little bit about SAML as well as anything else, and it was sort of a lot easier to, to set up than, than Azure, because I'm not massively Azure orientated. So please like and subscribe if you like the videos, obviously. If you don't, then don't, as I always say. Um, it does really help uh, trying to do all sorts of things this year with the channel. I know we're already in March, which is slightly worrying, because um, it seems like it was only January, but we're gonna we're gonna move on and, and do more stuff hopefully. Okay, so this is Prisma Prisma Access Browser, and it's pretty much it, you know it is what it is. It's it's a browser. So if we go to over over here, we can see we've got all the same um, all the same tabs and and options that we'd have before. We have password manager. The only difference we have here is these are very very controllable, and we'll have a look at the policies briefly. Uh, briefly in a minute. So we can look at Prisma Access Browser. So we can see that what version it is. We can see we've got all the different stuff here. And of course now AI, which appears everywhere these days, um, is all there. Okay. But what we also have is we have this. It looks like an extension next to it. Um, it is, but it's more sort of, uh, it, it's where you'll go to sort of look at the, the branding and stuff like that. And you'll go to do some of the stuff inside here. Okay, so we're going to have a look inside here. And this is where we go for troubleshooting. You can see that it is, it's branded. That's easy to be done. In fact, it's incredibly easy to do. Um, I'll show you how to do that uh, shortly. And then of course, we've got my company name and so on. I really need to put a space in between there because that looks a bit daft. Uh, and then we have diagnostics. So we can look at our diagnostic stuff. Um, so we can have a look at the latency and whether that looks good and so on and so forth. Um, URL category service, so as it backing off to the, the uses the same Paolo PanDB as, as the firewalls and so on, um, goes through the same security engines and everything. We have some quick actions to uh, to resolve some issues, um, so we can force update the engine, we can reload it, we can soft reset the browser, we can hard reset it and clear all the engine files and everything and reload the whole thing. And then we can clear all the user data, including the bookmarks, history and caches, it says with reset, so you can completely wipe it down. You can also have multiple accounts within a browser. Uh, so you can sign in as, as multiple different people, not at once, but you can sign in as multiple different people. Uh, and when you sign out of the browser, it then removes your data as well. Pris Prisma Access, hang on steady, Prisma Access integration is, is uh, something else again. So again with this, what we can do is we can then, we can forward uh, traffic to Prisma Access to come down a service connection. So if you have remote uh, users, you can um, you can do that explicit proxy, set up the explicit proxy in Prisma Access, which we'll do later on. Uh, and then that will provide uh, users not only with the secure web experience, but also they can then uh, access internal resources down um, down service connections in the same way as they would with Prisma Access. Okay, so what does it look like? So that's that's the troubleshooting. Um, 
you'll see here, just if we quickly look in here as well, so that's me, obviously, and you can see that we've got the last policy update was at 9.23. When you update policies, coincidentally, it's very, very quick. It's um, very quick to update the policy and then push down to the to the browser, and you can either quick do a soft reset or something like that to, to refresh the configuration on the local browser, or you can just wait and it will just it will just catch up. We've also got the logout and we've got the manage profiles. Okay, logging out as well. We've got uh, getting started in customization. So we can go through customization wizard and we can customize it here so we can show the sidebar or not. And then it takes us through importing bookmarks and settings exactly the same as you'd have as you have elsewhere, really, uh, with, with other browsers. Let me just get to the end of that. Okay, this is my customized, um, this is my customized homepage. So it comes to my web page when it's, when it's uh, for the next one, for, you know, for the, the next tab and so on, and when you first fire it up. And a quick version here is also show sidebar, which is the sidebar here, and if we just unclick that, all of this, um, I'm not quite sure why I chose this color. All of this is uh, customizable, but it's customizable per user as well, or user group, or even devices. Um, up here, we've got our home. So this is our home page, which of course takes us back here because that's what I've set that as. We've got definable bookmarks. So we can set bookmarks from mode 44 limited. So that's you've got bookmarks. And again, that's all customizable per user, per uh, user group. We can see the policy here. So with uh, with Prism Access Browser, we can control everything per website as to what a user can do. So, for instance, for this web page, developer tools are blocked, so we can't get to developer tools. Which uh, more tools? Go to developer tools, and then that's blocked, as you can see there. Okay, so the rest of our policy on here is for files. There's no restrictions for files, so we can uh, upload, download, do what we want. No restrictions for um, capture, and no restrictions for clipboard. Those are all completely configurable within within the policy. Okay, um, just a quick plug. If you do fancy going to my website, it could do with a bit more traffic, frankly. But um, there's not much more you can see there than than uh, than anywhere else. Um, although I do intend to start, as I say, I intend to start sort of um, updating that as well. So just to quick quickly go into the uh, how we manage this, and of course this is SCM Strata Cloud Manager, which is rapidly becoming my one of my favorite products at the minute. Um, and we get to it, so basically we, we get to it, so that's a bit confusing, but if you look, we've got Manage, Configuration, Prism Access Browser, and Workflows. We can edit those as well, so we know where they are, but they're basically configured within the configuration, or when you want to go and set it up, you set it up down here, okay? This is our overview page. We'll go into this uh, further in, in the next video and so on. But the main thing I want to show you at the minute is just is the rules. And again, we'll go into this as well uh, in, in much greater depth later on. But to give you an idea, so you've got browser customization, you can change, um, you can change the, the browser per user. They can get a different company logo, they can get different colors. We can go on to here and we can see we've got browser customization and then we've got theme color, brand color, company logo, the ADEM experience, so for the real user monitoring and stuff like that, we can do that per user, per admin group, all controlled within the scope. So within the scope, we've got the users, which backs off to our um, ID engine. The device groups, we can select groups of devices, mobile devices, Dell devices, uh, public networks, so if you want to um, use the public network of our users or locations for geolocation. And then we can control all of this per per that user. The access and data control is exactly the same. So we have, we can come into here and we can get, again, we've got the scope, we've got the destinations. I've selected um, specifically this walking show performance because I've got a bit of thing about VXR8. Um, and we can decide what we do with that or private, private applications or application groups. Again, just like you do on the firewall, so private applications, are, as it says, applications hosted your internal network. So you would select them there. Uh, web access, 
is to uh, to allow, do, yeah, you're going to allow it, you're going to prompt it, warn and allow to proceed anyway. And then once you've done that, how long is that going to be for? And then do we require MFA? Again, we'll look into this a lot, a lot further. Login controls is controlling uh, logins to um, to pages and stuff like that. So if we uh, allow specific email domains, for instance, you could then set a, an allowed list of email domains. If you wanted to block specific email domains, so if you wanted for DLP, for instance, um, phishing, if you didn't want people to be able to log in using their company uh, company domain, yeah, username and password, you would, you could block that in there as well. Here's the data controls that we was talking about. So this is part of the policy up here. Um, and then we've got, so we've got file download, and then we've got the, the different, uh, the different MITRE, uh, documentation around that as well. So allow, allow protected block. We can also do a, we can, as part of this, we can record the screen so we can record the screen before the action was taken and after the action was taken so that we've got full visibility of things. And then we can do when contains and we can start to really look at getting granular stuff and, and, and working stuff out basically. And on the home is where everything there is, is uh, is you can view what's happening on the network. You've got access, so what's being accessed, and then that drops down to here. Data, cut, copy events, paste events, file uploads, file downloads, and printing. Posture for the windows. So hopefully that was that was informative, and I will see you in the next video. And we're gonna we're gonna show how to build the policies, show how to customize policies, customize browsers for users and and everything will create some new users and, and stuff like that. Right, see you in the next video.